a very pleasant morning to you all. Let us get into diasporic literature, diasporic literature and overview. First, let us see what is diaspora. The term diaspora is derived from the Greek verb diaspero. It means to disperse or scatter. Diaspora is simply the displacement of a community or culture into another geographical and cultural region. But the word is uh, now also used more generally to describe any large migration of refugees. Some of the major diasporas of the past include Jewish diaspora, Aryan's diaspora, Palestinian diaspora, and African diaspora. The positive impact of this diaspora is this kind of migration helps in improving the quality of the life of people. It helps to improve social life of people as they learn about the new culture, customs, and languages. It helps to improve brotherhood among people. Migration of skilled workers leads to a greater economic growth of the region. And let us see the list of prominent uh, diasporas. Acadian diaspora is a very popular one. The British sent members of the same community, Acadian community, to different colonies to enforce assimilation. Do around 10,000 Acadians between 1755 to 1764. And next diaspora is Palestinian diaspora. This diaspora began in 1948 when the Palestinians were excluded from Palestine, now called Israel. The African diaspora, uh, this diaspora is the term commonly used to, to describe the mass dispersion of people from Africa during the transatlantic slave trades from the 1500s to 1800s. Australian diaspora is another di new term, perhaps coined by the Southern Cross group to refer to the 8,60,000 Australians living overseas. And next one is Bosnian diaspora. It is a very, it, uh, this diaspora as a phenomenon appeared after four years of planned ethnic cleansing in Bosnia and Cornish diaspora is another one, Tamil diaspora. Tamil diaspora is a term used to denote people of Tamil Nadu and Sri Lankan Tamil origin who have settled in many parts of India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Mauritius, Fiji, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago Islands, French Caribbean Islands, Europe, Australia and America. The next one is French Canadian diaspora that actually includes hundreds of uh, thousands of people who left Quebec for greener pastures in the United States. And then a Cuban diaspora and then Irish diaspora. This Irish diaspora, it consists of Irish immigrants and their descendants due to past famines and political oppression by, uh, uh, by England. In countries such as the United States, United Kingdom, uh, the, and then Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Argentina, South Africa, and nations of Caribbean and continental Europe. And then Jewish diaspora is another very important diaspora. In its historical use, it, it refers to the period between the Roman invasion and subsequent occupation of the land of Israel beginning in 70 BC. In modern use, the word diaspora refers to Jewish li Jews living outside the Jewish state. South African diaspora mainly uh, consists of white South Africans. Uh, uh, these immigrants, especially white African speakers who have fled the country for a number of reasons. South Africans have largely settled in the United Kingdom, 
uh, Australia, United States, New Zealand, and Canada. And next to one is the uh, uh, Southeast Asian diaspora. Uh, diaspora. And they, they include uh, the refugees from the numerous wars that took place in Southeast Asia, particularly the World War One, or Two, and the Vietnam War, and then Romanian diaspora, South Asian diaspora. This South Asian diaspora, it actually includes millions of people from South Asia. South, uh, they are settled in South Africa, Trinidad and Tobago Islands, Guyana, Jamaica, Mauritius, Fiji, Singapore, Malaysia, and other countries. They left in British India in the 19th and early 20th century and millions who have moved to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and United States, the United Kingdom, and the United Arab Emirates in the recent decades. And next, we'll see what does Indian diaspora mean? Indian diaspora is a gen generic term used for addressing people who have migrated from the territories that are currently within the borders of the Republic of India, it constitutes NRIs, that is a non-residential Indians, and PIOs, persons of Indian origins. The Indian diaspora is estimated to be over 30 million. And Indian diaspora can be classified into two kinds. They are forced migration to Africa, Fiji or the Caribbean islands in the 18th or 19th century, and then voluntary migration to the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and other European countries for professional or academic purposes. And then the features of the diaspora can be structured under three themes. The first one is nostalgia, memory, imaginary, homelands. Second one is hybridities and new identities. And third one is globalization and cosmopolitanism. Now we'll see what is diasporic literature. The literature is produced by these diasporic writers, people settled abroad are known as diasporic literature. Mina Alexander defines it as writing in search of homeland is diasporic literature. This literature is widely known as expatriate lit or literature or diasporic literature. Their sense of yearning for the homeland, a curious settlement to its traditions, religions, and languages gave birth to diasporic literature, which is primarily concerned with the individual's or community's attachment to the homeland. It is an interesting paradox that a great deal of Indian writing in English is produced not in India, but in widely distributed diaspora in the South Pacific, the Caribbean, South Africa, Mauritius, and the contemporary Indian diasporas in the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Africa, Australia. In many universities abroad, the courses in Indian literature have around 80% of diasporic writings. This means that the diasporic writings are interpreted are understood as representations of the homeland. And we'll see the features of diasporic culture or literature that would include the shift, contrast, and relation between center and the periphery, the memory details of childhood landscape, historical events, people, the sense of alienation in new society, new culture, or in the new land, features of homeland, home language, rituals, forms of behavior, reclamation of history of homeland, 
on childhood spaces ambivalence between seeking acceptance assimilation in the new cultures before entering into indian diasporic literature i would like to quickly review the history of indian diaspora pre colonial colonial and post colonial diaspora different kinds of indian diaspora across time and space the first one is pre european diasporas maritime or caravan routes diaspora european colonial period diaspora indentured labor voluntary or commercial and then post colonial diaspora maritime indian diaspora and maritime trade in indian ocean and beyond is very well represented in amitav ghosh in an antique land set in egypt the land trade along the land based routes to afghan china central asia central europe persian arab arabs lanka burma malaysia is very well represented in this kind of literature but the availability of this literature starts with those who migrated voluntarily or involuntarily during the british colonization the indian diasporic literature of colonial period began with the end of legal slavery in the early 1830s this resulted in recruitment of indentured labor from india to fill the gaps in labor market in the other british colonies so from the year 1830s till 1920s over a million indian laborers were displaced all over the world all over the globe from the islands of the african coast such as mauritius and seychelles to the south and east africa to the caribbean islands malaysia singapore burma and fiji a huge number of indians were taken as indentured laborers to these far off spaces from which very few of them ever returned the expression of longing and nostalgia for the old homeland is the common motif in much of the colonial diasporic literature which experienced the loss of self and diminution of status after their contract was over they needed to work there for their livelihood so they re to retain their consciousness of their homeland they preferred to appoint lawyers doctors teachers from their own motherland mahatma gandhi was one such import in south africa as for the post colonial diasporas they dated after the end of british colonial rule in 1947 centuries after the colonial exploitation left the nation economically weak and world war casualties left the other nations with insufficient skilled labor workers so skilled and semi skilled workers migrated to the uk uh, and britain also preferred doctors engineers nurses and teachers from india this labor uh, laborial diaspora was followed by the post colonial entrepreneurial diaspora academic diaspora in britain and it spreaded also to canada the usa but the usa attracted the large number of indian students in the 1970s and 1980s more liberal court of green card to the highly efficient professional attracted everybody there the nris have a very strong home consciousness and they sought to impose it on their children which created generational conflicts to an extent greater than anywhere else the generational conflicts of diaspora 
were very well represented in the works of Jhumpalari's namesake. Apart from these, Indians live in non-anglophonic European countries and South American countries also. They are usually IT professionals or highly qualified technocrats directly appointed by their companies, even by the Indian multinational companies in India to their international partners. The colonial and post-colonial had produced ample literature and now cinemas too. It helps them to understand themselves and tries to project themselves to the whole world. They face discrimination and loss of self in their new homeland and seek to re retreat both by the act of writing. As they are torn between two, the two places and two cultures and often few languages, the expatriate writer navigates a new literary space. Even though some have lived in their new homeland over a hundred years, such as in the West Indies, the awareness of home is very strong and present in their very writings as nostalgia as well as pain. Generally, diasporic literature deals with alienation, displacement, existential rootlessness, nostalgia, quest for identity, displacement or dislocation, cross-cultural encounters, fluid identity, diasporic sensibility, fragmentation, racial discrimination, marginalization, crisis in identity, cultural confrontation, assimilation, and so on. It also addresses issues related to amalgamation or disintegration of cultures. It reflects the immigrant experience that comes out of the immigrant settlement. The feeling of longing for the old home is very well represented, expressed in the poetry of Indo-Fijian writer Sutesh Mishra, who follows Hindi poetry tradition. But not all cherish the home, memories of homeland. Example, the Nobel laureate V.S. Naipal, an Indo-Trinidadian, he had a, a troubled relationship with India, lived in a double diaspora in the London. There are many diasporic Indians in the West Indies intermarried the black West Indians who either retain their Indianness or like Sam Selvan, the writer who moved to Britain are in denial of their Indian identity. A major issue of diasporic literature is identity. The quest of who am I? Where do I belong? Am I a West Indian or am I st I'm still an Indian? Am I a British or Indian? Am I an American or still an Indian? This question haunts the diasporic writers. This kind of rejection from the new homeland leads to the double diasporization. The literature of double diasporic Afro-Indo-Canadian writer M.G. Vasanji is a very best example for this. Then hybrid identity and hyphenated identity. Hybrid identity is a, it's actually nothing but it's a, a example for this one is grafted plant, a hybrid plant. When we graft a plant, this plant the, uh, displays the characteristic of old plant as well as the second plant. At the same time, the new, uh, the new plant, uh, in, but in many ways is different from both of the old as well as the second plant. Somewhat this hybrid identity is like that only. And hyphenated identity is nothing but Indo-Canadian, Indian-American, Afro-American, and are the best examples of this hyphenated identity. 
post colonial meta theorist homi k baba sees hybridity as a third space in the context of diasporics indo canadian writers come under this category is the hyphen an indication of an assimilation and integration into the population where they are supposed to be the hybrids or is it a pride association of the older identity on par the new one it would be interesting to read indo canadian writers such as uma parmeshwaran anita rao badani rohinton mystery sona singh balwal their th and themes are integrated and assimilated to the canadians mangoes on the maple trees written in the year 2006 by uma parmeshwaran short story collection tales from ferozabad by rohinton mystery are good to understand this kind of feeling so far we have seen the content of diasporic writing and the characteristic features of longing nostalgia pain and problems with identity now we move on to the form of diasporic writing how do the diasporic writers construct their literature what are the narrative styles used by these writers like other post colonial indian writers diasporic indian writers also use their colonizers language do not merely use their language to praise them however they use rather appropriately to subvert or challenge the privileging colonial discourse are and the hegemony of western narrative modes like uh, caliban's character in shakespeare's the tempest here caliban he learns his master prospero's language only to curse prospero like that diasporic writers and writings are bold enough to show the negative sides of their new lands in addition to the towering figure of uh, salman rushdi the post colonial economic and academic diasporas have their own representative writers of north america such as rohinton mystery jumpa lairi kiran desai vikram chandra bharati mukaji in britain they have salman rushdi and the first and second generation writers like sunitra gupta atima shri vastava and farooq dolli the petroleum diaspora is another diaspora that is again an indian diaspora in the arab countries it also has given as a bilingual writer like Vira, vilas sarang this is just the representative not the complete list of indian diasporic writers a b c d american born confused desi is a term that refers to the people of desi origin and living in united states themes in jumpalaris the names they are quest for identity and also second generation indian americans long neglected role of being an indian the lowland is about the naxal calcutta and problematic society and hari kunzaros a novel transmission that also has the has dealt with another contemporary realistic aspect of the professional indian diasporic diasporas particularly the tech skilled people whose dreams of making dollars and the name for themselves in uh, silicon valley of america get crushed because of the saturation of job opportunities now we'll see some of the prominent diasporic writers and their works first one is ak ramanujan he occupies an important place among indo american poets with a wish for connectedness and the absence of connection are the two facts of ramanujan's poetic world next vs naipal booker as well as nobel prize winner received knighthood also portrays 
the search for roots in his novel a house for mr biswas a bend in the river exploration of native historical traditions in his novel half a life and magic seeds about an indian immigrant to the england and then africa he popularized the terms sense of exile and the experience of homelessness next salman rushdi booker winning his booker winning midnight's children in the 18 1981 is a post war post imperial generation story through this story the young readers time travel into the past he popularized the terms alternative narrative magic realism we can consider this work as an introduction to post colonial writing amitav ghosh is a very popular indian writer indian diasporic writer he is basically an anthropologist his popular works are the circle of reason it is his debut novel the shadow lines the calcutta chromosome the glass palace the hungry tide sea of poppies the river of smoke flood, flood of fire these these are the ibis trilogy in an antique land his works have been translated into more than 30 languages vikram seth is also a very popular indian diasporic writer the golden gate a suitable boy an equal music and works of poetry mappings the humble administrator's garden are all about multicultural identity and cultural diversity isolation and estrangement then mg vasanji he is an indo kenyan canadian writer his works are known throughout north america in africa and in south asia and has been translated into number of languages his works are about situations of east african indians second migration the relation between the indian community and indian folk culture and myth next one is canada based parsi zoroastrian writer rohinton mystery his works are good examples of ethnocentric diasporic literature though focused on parsis it also has multiculturalism and transnationalism in his first novel such a long journey he wrote about 1971 war of indo -Pak pakistan for bangladesh in this the parsi world moves out of their self improved isolation imposed isolation into the wider nation space and fine balance is another work it records the dark episode of uh, a emergency period and uh, from family ties he moves to ethno religious space and the next writer is amit choudhury he is also a very popular writer he wrote many novels and uh, his novels are about human struggles k s maniam is an indian malaysian academic dramatist and novelist and his work themes are identity and culture trying to become a citizen in malaysia and the return to the roots and next person is david jardin he is a guyanese born broadcaster novelist poet and academic and he was awarded the hind ratan jewel of india in the year 2007 it is an award for his outstanding contribution to literature as well as the intellectual life of the indian diaspora and cyril dabidin is a guy again a guyana born canadian writer of indian descent writer he's a writer poet laureate also he's a cousin of this uk writer david dabidin and his uh, he is mainly focuses on race relations and then women writers of the indian diaspora first one is kamala makandeya she is considered to be among the first few diasporic female indian writers settled in england 
the protagonist of our novel the nowhere man is oppressed by the discrimination even after living about 30 years in england and then comes anita desai and her daughter kiran desai anita desai immigrated to england and later to america respectively is another prominent diasporic female indian writer her novel bye bye blackbird in the year 1971 portrays the immigrants who are in search of their identity in another land kiran desai daughter of anita desai her novel the inheritance of loss portrays the life struggle of indian diaspora as well as the aspects of globalization racial intolerance terrorism and multicultural societies she won national book critics award circle award and booker prize too making her the youngest female recipient of booker prize so far and next person is bharati mukherjee another famous diasporic female indian writer who was born in calcutta later immigrated to america her novel wife depicts the transformation of a modest conventional indian wife to uh, the murderer of her husband in jasmine she wisely uplifts herself to be an independent brave woman after the conflicts she faced in an unfamiliar context the next writer is chitra banerji divakaruni she immigrated to america her award winning novel the mistress of spices in the year 1997 portrays an indian girl who works in the spice shop in america helps other immigrants to resolve their problems with, with the magic of her spices thus devakaruni has flourished her novel with the elements of magic realism meena alexander immigrated to sudan and then to america her novel manhattan music portrayed the immigrant life identity crisis racial intolerance international affairs and marriages in a sensitive style then jumpa lahri is a second generation indian american who was born in london her short story collection interpreter of maladies on a custom earth and the two novels the uh, namesake and the lowland are all been well received won several awards lahri has successfully engaged aspects like the generational gap between first and second generation immigrants conflict of east west beliefs cultural displacement nostalgia loss of identity alienation and despair geeta mehta is the renowned writer of the novels like uh, raj and uh, river sutra and non fiction book like uh, karma karma kola and snakes and the ladder is also a very popular writer of indian diaspora and uma parameshwaran a poet playwright and short story writer was born in madras her son must sons must die it is a play it centered on the partition of 1947 meera is in 1971 sita's promise in 1981 and few other works a collection of short stories and rootless but green are the bolver trees its subject matter moves to the new generation of indo canadians children of immigrants raised in canada and complicated relationship of uh, between their parents and the children and the next one is gayatri chakravarti spivak is an indian scholar literary theorist and feminist critic she is best known for her essay can the subaltern speak and another person is sunetra gupta her writing is also on uh, dilemma and isolation faced by indian immigrants amidst the complexities of new context and other indian immigrant novelists include uh, it is a very long list ashish gupta revad dionandran neel bisundnath arnold harichand idwaru hari kunsru 
so it goes on so number of writers are there and next the six characteristics of the uh, collect, uh, collective experiences of diasporic people these diasporic people and or their ancestors have been dispersed from a specific original center to two or uh, more peri peripheral or um, uh, foreign regions they retain a collective memory vision or myth about their original homeland its physical location history and achievements these writers believe that they are not and perhaps perhaps cannot be fully accepted by their host society and therefore they feel partly alienated as well as isolated from the new land they regard their ancestral homeland as their true ideal home and as the place to which they or their descendants would or should eventually return when conditions are appropriate they believe they should uh, that they should collectively be committed to the maintenance or restoration of their original homeland and to its safety and prosperity these diasporic writers and diasporic people they continue to relate personally or vicariously to that ham homeland in one way or another and their ethno communal consciousness and solidarity are importantly defined by the existence of such a relationship diasporic experience is basically about home and the world where home stands for the culture of one's origin and the world refers to the culture of the adopted land adoption and research perspective in this area diasporic literature so we can do research on so many topics subaltern studies marginalization cultural studies diaspora theory expatriate or diasporic literature humanistic psychology personality theory identity crisis or quest for identity multiculturalism alienation the cultural clash of american individual individualism and indian communitarianism autobiographical writing racial oppression gender studies and so on during this pandemic covid-19 period unexpected terrific circumstances migrant laborers we see migrant workers can also be referred here migrants are less familiar in their new environment in which they temporarily live they are going to various social psychological and emotional traumas in such situations emanating from fear of neglect by the local community and concerns about well-being and safety of their families waiting in their native places migrants are forced to leave their native places in search of better opportunities and yearnings sometimes leaving behind their families in many instances the families in native places depend partially or entirely on the money sent by these migrants earning migrant earning members of the family so all this calls for strong social protection it is time to conclude lastly there is an element of connection to one's homeland and the historical understanding which needs to be taken into consideration indian diasporic writings become really important as they provide the readers a wide range of views and opinions on india as a country and as cultural space it also throws light on the traditions and social status of the indians across the globe let us enjoy diasporic literature read a lot spend quality time with our family during this covid-19 time 
and spend so much of time with our books also. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you.